What's up, guys? Straight from the chest. I'm your host, Justin Groth. Thank you for tuning in. What a beautiful day it is. But let's be honest. When is it not a beautiful day? We live in California. It's just the nature of California. It's the nature of the weather, right? It's one of my pet peeves. My mom gets irritated at me because she's such a she, – she loves complimenting the weather. And I always say the same thing that I just said right now. What's the big deal? We live in California. It's always great weather, 72 degrees, 68. If it's cold, it's like 66, 67, and we're freezing, right? We're spoiled. But let's be honest. It's always going to be – nine times out of ten, it's always going to be a beautiful day in California. But anyways – that's <laughs> that we were just having a conversation yesterday that made me think of that right now. But man, my podcast today is about, and I never say this in the beginning, right? I never tell you what the message is about. But like always, this happens frequently to me. I'll have something that I want to message out on, and then at the last minute, it'll be changed, it'll be derailed by something else. And if it's derailed by something else, it's because that particular thing speaks more volume to me than the already originated topic that I was going to uh, express. And in this moment, it's, and I kind of briefly touched on it last podcast, but have you ever had a conversation with an older person? And I mean like, 70, 60, 70, 80 years old, what's the common denominator in most of those, if not all, of those elderly people? And it's A, nine times out of 10, if not 10 times out of 10, a lot of wisdom, right? Because they've been living for such a long time. They've been through a lot of experiences, a lot of trials and challenges that you haven't yet or I. And then also, the not giving a sh attitude. That seems to rear its head almost every time that I'm having a conversation with somebody who's older. And it doesn't come in the, in the text of direct. Like they don't tell me, I don't care. I don't give a sh I don't care. It's in their demeanor. You just know that they don't really care what you think. You just can sense that when you're speaking with them and they don't mean for it to come across in any type of slanderish way. It's just the way that they are now. It's like they're hardened. And it's like they're hardened for good reason, right? They've been through a lot of trials and challenges. And they're hardened as a result. But they're not bitter. See, there's a difference. You can be hardened and not bitter. And you can be hardened and bitter, right? We understand the juxtaposition of both of those. But too often, or more often than not, I am, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm so, I don't know what's a good word, flabbergasted by their state of not caring. And too often, you know this if you're listening right now, you know this. You care about what others think of you way more than you should. And if you're saying, I don't know about you, Justin, but I don't, you care the most. So much so that you're lying to yourself subconsciously. If we're all truthful, we all care to some notion or some degree of what others think of us. And it's by nature kind of ingrained in our DNA to become accepted by others, to find our tribe, to hone in on what our identity is. And we do that by finding others of the same likeness. So if you think that you're the one-off, you're the unicorn, you're not. And you're lying to yourself the most. Okay, now that I've established that truth in you, and it's, I know it hits you hard and you hate it and you're probably now going to tune me out. That's fine. I'm going to give you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. I'm not concerned with the want. I'm concerned with what you need to develop your best self. And this is something 
that all of us deal with at some point in time, if not on a long scale, we deal with it. And we, we need to really realize the magnitude of the importance that should be within us and us and our identity every single day that we live. And the, quick, the quicker you can hone in on this and the faster you can apply it and take action on it and reestablish it daily and daily and daily as a, as a byproduct, the further and closer you'll be to your goal, to your purpose, to your innate being of what God has designed in you. The 16-year-old, 17-year-old, 18-year-old, 20-somewhat-year-olds really don't hone in on, especially right now, when media is everything and your highlight reel is everything, they don't hone in on what makes them unique. Because nine times out of 10, what makes them unique has not really been done yet or not done to the illustration that they would want it to be done to. Does that make sense? So they, by default, they, flounder back into what everybody else does and what everybody else is, is hoopler and hollering about because they know they can't really stand out in a bad way if they do what everybody else is doing. And that is the first wrong because it's not a big deal or I'm sorry, it's not the wrong thing to do to stand out. You want to stand out. God made you to stand out. But all too often we try to, we try to find comfort in our, what seems to be a dysfunction when it's really not. That's the thing that's trying to raise up out of your soul and bring you into your zenith, but you won't allow it because it doesn't look like everybody else's thing, right? It doesn't look like everybody else's thing. And because of that, you're scared and you're scared of people's comments. You're scared of people's you know, facial expressions when you talk to them about the thing you want to do and yada, 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 because you want to be accepted because you care what people think, <clears throat> right? It's just the way it is. Now, what, what talent, it's not a talent, but what thing that, I've, that I've, I've, I've seen in a lot of older people, my elders, is that they just don't really care. And again, they don't care from the, from the standpoint of like trying to make a statement, I don't care, or trying to act tough. They really genuinely don't care right now because they've already been through so much and they realize what is important and what is important. And this may come as a shock to you. What is important is not your business. It's not your clothes. It's not your car. It's not your house. It's not anything that you have on your person right now, even though you've worked hard to get that. And your and even though your business provides for your family, it's still not important. What is important are the relationships that you develop with people. It's how you interact. It's how you leave people once you're done conversating with them. It's the effect that you have on that person in terms of what you've spoken into them or what you've spoken over them. That is what means the most in this life. Your family, your relations you make, not connections, even though connections is cool, whatever, relations. The foundations that made you a great person in the beginning. The foundations that created civilizations in the beginning. It wasn't based on people saying, oh, well, uh, I want to um, I want to do this. And so you're going to do this for me, right? Delegating. No, it was based on people created civilizations by creating relationships first with people, investing in people, and them investing in them in return and reciprocation. And as a byproduct, they started to work together and grow together and build together. So despite what you think and what the world has taught you, what the world has taught me, what media teaches you perpetually every single day, that your glitz, your car, what you live in, what you dress like, if you don't got a Supreme backpack, you're not doing it right, bro. If you don't got, if you don't got Yeezys on, you're not doing it right. What media has taught you and brainwashed you to think, and me too, because I'm not, I'm not immune to this, is wrong. What really matters, 99% of what you have right now in your life, monetarily, does not matter. 
it doesn't matter. Once you get the phone call, once you get the horrendous, horrific phone call at two in the morning that your kid veered off the road and he's now in the hospital, you forget everything. You forget everything. Once you get bad news from a doctor, you forget everything that you thought was important and it puts things in perspective and you stop caring about the little needless things or the small idolatries you put on your life and you start honing in on focusing on what really matters. And it's not your business. It's not. It's not your car. It's not your house. It's your ability to develop relationships. It's the love that you've established with your family, with your friends, with your counterpart. That is what means the most. Everything else is almost, almost futile. And you know who realizes that so much? The elders. They realize that. They understand it. And that's why when you speak to them, they don't come from a place of conviction. They're coming from a place of authenticism in the, in the, in the context of they just really don't care because they really know what's important. And that's what they're trying to express. They don't really care how you feel about what they think. They don't really care what they drive. They don't really care how they live or how they dress or if there's a little dribble on their shirt, even though they might not even really recognize that because they're, you know, I don't know. I remember my grandparents, they didn't really remember they had a dribble on their shirt when they did or they spilt. That's just, I guess, part of growing up, right? But even if they knew, do you think that they would go in the closet and change their shirt? No, they don't care. And if more of us at 20, 21, 22, 23, realize that we would be so much further and so much greater than we are right now. But we care so much about what other people do and what other people think of us that we put boundaries, unreserved, unrealistic boundaries on us and suppress what we're innately, innately, innately great at. And that's the problem. That's the disconnect. But if you just for a day and then two days and then three days applied, not caring and being you. I know that sounds hippie-ish, be you, dude. Like, no, I'm not saying just be you. I'm saying live you, live you, live who you are and what you breed inside and live how you think and don't worry about what anybody else has to say. If you did that, you are now on the embarking of emotional, spiritual, freedom. And as a byproduct, you'll live more joyous. You'll provide more value to people and you'll be thriving daily.